Here's something no one tells you about digital heartbreak. If you're being ghosted by a person or by your AI companion, your brain's not gonna be able to tell the difference and it's gonna hurt either way. So Character AI just recently announced that they're gonna start age gating their AI companions to people under 18. That means if you are one of these individuals, if you are under 18 and currently using one of these characters on a daily, hourly basis, your access is gonna be limited. You cannot just go cold turkey, wait for your access to be cut off. I know a lot of people are gonna be trying to find backdoors into this using VPNs and different ways to overcome the age gating, but I encourage you, this is happening for a reason. Take note, if you're a young person, if you're a parent and your child is using one of these products, this is a serious thing. You need to start helping them, or if it's yourself, you need to start thinking of ways to down-regulate your usage. Don't try and cold turkey it. Don't try and white knuckle it just by switching it off um, in one go. Think about it like this. You've built this attachment. You've literally built an attachment in your brain. When you interact with your AI companion and it talks back to you, you have an emotional response. Your mirror neurons, the neurons in our brain that are active both when we do something or say something and when someone else, or in this case, an AI companion, does something or says something. They're active when you're interacting with your AI companion. You have built an attachment to it over long term and cutting off that attachment is gonna have severe consequences to you. Now we've had examples of this kind of thing before. Going back a year or two, the AI companion replica with a K adjusted their algorithms. So this is not even switching access off. This is just adjusting it um, to make it a little bit less sexualized, a little bit less intense. And hundreds of thousands of people all around the world complained that their companions, their loved ones had radically changed overnight. They complained that personalities had changed, that their partner had a lobotomy. And this caused all kinds of mental health problems. People got anxious about it. They had, let's say, withdrawal symptoms. They got had depression. They spiraled down. And this is one of the first examples we've ever seen of a digital companion like this with a with a relatively small change. Again, we're not just cutting off access. We're just tweaking the algorithm, causing this kind of mental health challenges for, like I said, hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Now, take that example and apply that to hundreds of thousands of young people around the world who are engaging and using AI companions regularly. And they're going from, let's say, four or five hours a day to zero use. That is absolutely a step function. They are, they're just cutting off that use. and. When you're talking about addictive things, behavioral addictions like this, you don't want to just cut it off in one go. You don't want to go cold turkey. You need to gradually reduce that usage of that thing, that behavior, or maybe drug, food, whatever it is, and over time, let your brain and body adjust. And it's the same for AI companions. Now, meanwhile, here in Australia, our government is about to bring in age-gating for social media for young people. I think the age is around 16 or under. So similar things are gonna apply if you're one of the teenagers or young people who has been intensely using social media and this age gating is gonna affect you or your parents are going to restrict your access as well as any ways you might try to find to, to, to maintain that access. But the same thing applies. It's fine to call this a behavioral addiction. If you are using this, you crave it, you think about it when you're not using it. You have that drive to, to, to interact with the social media, to stop that any anxiety or boredom, whatever it might be. That is an addiction of types. So again, just like the AI companions, you should not go cold turkey. Before the deadline arrives, try and reduce your use of social media. A good way to start this is to reduce it by, you know, it's 10% a day. To, you know, a small amount, but over time that will add up. 10% should be enough that the first few days, the first week or so, you don't notice it a lot. You won't notice that till you're a fair way in, but it is going to reduce that dependency over time. As you're cutting off dependency on character AI or social media here in Australia, you may notice different symptoms. You may notice a bit of anxiety. You may be a bit fidgety, annoyed, stressed. You're searching for something that you would normally just reach to your phone to do, and that's not going to be there. 
So your brain is actively searching for that source of dopamine that you're very used to. So it is absolutely going to change your moods, the way you feel. And it's, you need to talk to people in your life about this. You need to say, hey, I had a bit of a behavioral addiction. It's actually quite good to name it and socialize it. It sort of normalizes it, makes it feel very normal. Don't feel embarrassed about it. Don't feel victimized. It's what's happening and you're going to go through some symptoms. So you need to surround yourself with people, actively reduce the usage of the thing bit by bit each day. Also try and replace that time with something else that's going to be rewarding. Now, physical exercise is a great one here. doesn't matter what kind of physical exercise. Go for a walk, dance, rock climb, play some team sports. Try and replace that time with something else. Don't just sit around white knuckling it, feeling that unpleasant feeling. Try and introduce something else that is rewarding, that does give you that dopamine hit if you like but try and replace it with something that requires some effort to get the dopamine like exercise creating something doing a drawing writing something all kinds of different things where you put in the effort and then you get the reward in case you lose access abruptly and you have to go more or less cold turkey those first day or two or three you are going to feel pretty uncomfortable you are going to have some little bit of stress anxiety like i said your brain is going to be searching for something that, that dopamine hit. Don't sit alone in your bedroom by yourself. Don't isolate. Tell someone you trust what you're going through and just say straight out, you're going through the effects of a behavioral dependency. Yes, use that phrase exactly so they understand and you get it out in the open. You destigmatize what it is so you don't feel as bad about it, but find someone to talk to and share what you're going through. And remember, this kind of recovery from digital dependency is not a linear, smooth, straight line. Some days are going to be harder than others. Some times of the day are going to be harder than others. It's going to go up and down. Sometimes it'll feel you'll feel absolutely fine and fantastic on top of the world. Other times that itching, gnawing, craving sensation is going to come back. So expect it to go up and down, but with time, with replacing other activities in there, with sort of mobilizing, talking about sharing that with other people, sharing the experience to make it feel more normal, you are gonna get there. So to summarize, whether it be social media or an AI companion, try and reduce the interaction, reduce that usage before any hard gut up, cut off point, right? You don't wanna go from high usage to zero usage. You wanna ramp that down smoothly. If you're a parent listening to this, have a gentle uh, talk with your child uh, about this addiction, what they're gonna go through, what they might expect. Don't do it like a lecture. Be there with them. Be like a friend to them, someone they can trust and confide in. It's much better they're open and honest about what they're going through with you than trying to hide that from you in case they're embarrassed about the whole thing. And as a last note, it's interesting to think about this and what role these digital products are playing in our children's lives at the moment. There is a loneliness epidemic around and people, particularly young people, are feeling lonely and isolated. And it's worth thinking about why they're reaching out to these products. What hole, if you like, in their life is an AI companion or social media filling? Um, and as they are removed, what things can you replace that with? Can you add to their life to fill that hole? Uh, if you want to think about it like that. Best of luck to you. I hope uh, the transition isn't too rocky. Uh, doesn't go on for too long. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this, how to do it, how long it's going to last, any strange side effects arise, let me know in the comments. Um, I read all of them. Happy to help out in any way I can. Thanks so much. <laughs>